hi and welcome to my channel and that is health alerts uh, first thing first a well informed person is more likely to survive longer and have a better quality of life than uninformed ones and as we all know an apple a day nowadays may no more keep a doctor away so a bit of information on our health and what are the implications and what can be the solutions would help definitely one to live a healthy life and to live longer uh, okay therefore eat healthy stay healthy smile because laughter is the best medicine and most importantly for smiling costs zero rupees please also subscribe to my channel like and share because that will also cost you zero rupees this is my request and appeal to you thank you and now let me proceed with my today's topic that is panic attack and anxiety attack now everybody in their lifetime must have gone some kind of an anxiety or panic attack so what is anxiety exactly anxiety is your body's natural response to stress it's a feeling of fear and apprehension about what's to come about the future for example going to a job interview or giving a speech on the first day of school may cause some people to feel fearful and nervous but if your feelings of anxiety are extreme last for at least 6 months and are interfering with your life you may have an anxiety disorder anxiety disorder are the most common form of emotional disorders and can affect anyone but according to the american psychiatric association women are more likely than men to receive a diagnosis of an anxiety disorder what are the types of anxiety disorder anxiety is a vital part of several different disorders this include panic disorder this means you experience recurring panic attacks at unexpected times phobia this is an excessive fear of a specific object situation or activity social anxiety disorder in short it is also called sad or sad this is an extreme fear of being judged by others in social situations and many of us or most of the people sometime or the other undergoes this social anxiety disorder then comes ocd what is called obsessive compulsive disorder this means you have recurring irrational thoughts that lead you to perform specific repeated behaviors for example some people you will find that you know checks whether they have locked their uh, doors appropriately or not and they will keep on checking and repeating and checking once again this is one example of obsessive compulsive disorder or ocd or washing things repeatedly washing hands repeatedly that is also some kind of ocd or obsessive compulsive disorder then comes separation anxiety disorders this means you have a fear of being away from home or your loved ones illness anxiety disorder this is anxiety about your health in addition a number of mental health and medical conditions may feature anxiety as a symptom now symptoms of anxiety anxiety feels different depending on the person experiencing it feelings can range from butterflies in your stomach to a racing heart you might feel out of control like there is a disconnect between your mind and body you may have a general feeling of fear and worry or you may fear a specific place or event in some cases you may experience a panic attack anxious thoughts or beliefs that are difficult to control is one of the symptom of anxiety now they can come in front of in, in the form of restlessness trouble concentrating difficulty falling asleep fatigue irritability unexplained aches and pains your anxiety symptoms might be different from someone else's 
That's why it's essential to know how anxiety can present itself. What is a panic attack? Now, feeling suddenly the combination of these are the symptoms of a panic attack. High stress, sudden high stress, sweating and shaking, increased blood pressure, uneasiness in chest, extreme chills, dizziness, hot flush, nausea. These can be the symptoms of a sudden panic attack. What is a panic attack? A panic attack is a sudden episode of intense fear. Remember, it's intense fear, unlike anxiety. That triggers several physical reactions when there is no real danger or apparent cause. Panic attacks can be very frightening. When panic attacks occur, you might think you are losing control, having a heart attack or even dying. Many people have just one or two panic attacks in their lifetime. And the problem <coughs> sorry, goes away perhaps when a stressful situation ends. But if you had recurrent unexpected panic attacks and spent long periods in constant fear of another attack, you may have a condition called panic disorder. What is a panic attack again? Although panic attacks themselves are not life threatening, they can be frightening and significantly affect your quality of life. But treatment can be very effective. Panic attacks typically include some of these signs and symptoms. Sense of impending doom or danger. Fear of loss of control or death. Rapid pounding heart rate. Sweating. Trembling or shaking. Shortness of breath or tightness in your throat. Chills. Hot flashes. Nausea. Abdominal cramping. Chest pain. Headaches. Dizziness, lightheadedness, or faintness, numbness or tingling sensation, feeling of unreality or detachment. One of the worst things about panic attack is the intense fear that you will have another one. You may fear having panic attack so much that you avoid certain situations where they may occur. What causes anxiety? Experts are not sure of the exact cause of anxiety, but it's likely that a combination of factors play a role. The causes of anxiety may include stress, other medical issues such as depression or diabetes, first degree relative with generalized anxiety disorder that is genetic in nature, environmental concerns such as child abuse, substance use for example like drug abuse or alcohol abuse situations such as surgery or occupational hazard in addition researchers believe that it seems from the areas of the brain responsible for controlling fear and the storing of retrieval of emotional and fear related memories who is at risk of anxiety disorders with each type of anxiety, there are different risk factors, but there are some general influences, including personality traits. These include shyness and nervousness in childhood. Life history. This includes being exposed to negative or stressful life events. Genetics. Of those diagnosed with anxiety, 25% have a first degree relative who also has a diagnosis of anxiety. Other health conditions like thyroid problems and other health conditions can make you prone to anxiety. Stimulants, consuming caffeine, specific substances like drugs, alcohol, etc. and medications can worsen your symptoms. Are there tests that diagnose anxiety? A single test actually can't diagnose anxiety. Instead, an anxiety diagnosis requires a lengthy process of physical examinations, mental health tests, and psychological questionnaire. Some doctors or healthcare professionals may conduct a physical exam, including blood or urine tests, to rule out underlying medical conditions that could contribute to the symptoms you are experiencing. Several anxiety tests and scales are also used to help a doctor assess the level of anxiety you are experiencing. Uh, this is a comparative chart between panic attack and anxiety attack. Panic attack. 
usually occurs unexpectedly. There is sudden and extremely disruptive condition. Usually more intense physical symptoms are found triggered by body's flight or fight response. Coming to anxiety attack usually has specific triggers. Normally builds in intensity, can be mild, moderate or severe, focused on specific stressors themselves. Then, so what are the treatments for anxiety? Once you have received a diagnosis of anxiety, you can explore treatments options with a doctor. Treatment can help you overcome the symptoms and lead a more manageable day-to-day -day life. Treatment for anxiety falls into three categories. Psychotherapy. Therapy can include cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure response prevention. Complemental health techniques, mindfulness, yoga and self-management strategies such as stress management are always to treat are ways to treat your anxiety using alternative methods. Medication. Doctors prescribe anti-anxiety or antidepressant drugs. Meeting with a therapist or psychologist can help you learn tools to use the strategies to cope with stress when it comes or when it occurs. What natural remedies are used for anxiety? Lifestyle changes can effectively relieve some of the stress and anxiety you may cope with every day. Most natural remedies consist of caring for your body and participating in healthy activities while eliminating unhealthy ones. Now, these includes getting enough sleep, meditating, staying active and exercising, eating a healthy diet, avoiding alcohol, avoiding caffeine, quitting smoking cigarettes if you smoke. Now, anxiety and depression. If you have an anxiety disorder, you may also be experiencing depression. While anxiety and depression can occur separately, it's not unusual for mental health disorders to happen together. Anxiety can be a symptom of clinical or major depression. Likewise, worsening symptoms of depression can become triggered by an anxiety disorder. You can manage symptoms of both conditions with many of the same treatments like psychotherapy, that's counseling, meditation and lifestyle changes. How to help children in anxiety? We find almost always at all the household children undergoing some kind of anxiety, depression or mental conditions. Now, how to help those children suffering with or undergoing anxiety? Anxiety in children is natural and expected. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, 9.4% of children and adolescents aged 3 to 17 have had a diagnosis of anxiety. As children grow up, they should outgrow the worries and fears they felt when they were younger. It may be considered an anxiety disorder if they are afraid to be away from their parents, exhibit extreme fear and other anxiety symptoms that interfere with their day-to-day -day lives. Anxiety in children can also become chronic and persistent with uncontrolled anxiety leading them to avoid interacting with their peers or family members. Signs of anxiety in children. Now, these are the signs and symptoms of anxiety in children like anger, irritability, trouble speaking or sleeping, feeling of fear, fatigue, headaches, stomach aches. Anxiety treatment for children include cognitive behavioral therapy, that is, talk therapy and medications. How to help the teens with anxiety? Teenagers may have many reasons to be anxious. Tests, college visits, and first dates all pop up in these important years. But teenagers who feel anxious or experience anxiety symptoms frequently may have an anxiety disorder. Symptoms of anxiety in teenagers may include nervousness, shyness, isolationist behaviors, and avoidance. How to help teens with anxiety? 
Likewise, anxiety in teens may lead to unusual behaviors. For example, they may act out, perform poorly in school, skip social events, and even engage in substance or alcohol use. In some teens, depression may accompany anxiety. Diagnosing both conditions is essential so that their treatment can address the underlying issues and help relieve symptoms. The most common treatments for anxiety in teenagers are talk therapy and medication. These treatments also help address depression symptoms. Now, anxiety and stress. <clears throat> stress and anxiety are related but different. Stress is a typical and healthy reaction to an identifiable event that's making you nervous. I repeat, stress is a typical and healthy reaction to an identifiable event that's making you nervous, such as an upcoming test, presentation, wedding, or other major changes in life. Stress will go away once the trigger goes away. For example, when your presentation is over, your stress goes off. Or when your exam is over, your stress goes off. Or when your wedding is over, your stress goes off. Anxiety, on the other hand, persists beyond any trigger and may exist without a known trigger. A person may need treatment for anxiety to go away. Both anxiety and stress respond well to physical activity, good sleep hygiene, and a well-balanced diet. But if your anxiety and stress don't respond well and you feel your day-to-day -day functioning is impaired, a mental health professional can help you determine a treatment plan. Anxiety and stress. Neither stress nor anxiety is always bad. How? Both can provide you with a boost or incentive to accomplish the task or challenge before you. For example, if you are going to face an interview, that can cause some stress in you. But stress, that stress actually can be productive also because that can make you to be more serious towards your preparation for the interview to come out successfully. But if these feelings become persistent, they can begin to interfere with your daily life. In that case, it is important to get treatment. The long-term outlook for people with unrelated or untreated depression and anxiety includes chronic health issues like heart diseases. Anxiety and alcohol. Can alcohol worsen anxiety? Yes, alcohol can both cause and worsen anxiety. If you are anxious frequently, you may decide you would like a drink to calm your nerves. After all, it is presumed alcohol is a sedative. In addition, it can depress the activity of your central nervous system, which may help you feel more relaxed. Some people with anxiety disorders abuse alcohol or other drugs regularly to feel better, creating dependency and addiction. It may be necessary to treat an alcohol or drug problem before the doctor actually can address the anxiety. But chronic and long-term use can ultimately worsen the condition. Anxiety prevention. There are many ways to prevent anxiety and its symptoms. How that go? Avoidance. Avoidance is avoiding people, places, and situations can lessen your stress and anxiety. But this would be a short-term strategy. In the long term, it's better if you get treatment so you no longer need to avoid a trigger. Stress management and mindfulness. Practicing stress management and mindfulness prevents strain. Restrict caffeine. Caffeine can worsen anxiety symptoms. Support groups. Speaking with others is an opportunity to share coping strategies and experiences. Therapy. Speaking with a therapist can help you develop more effective ways to cope with fears and stress that lead to anxiety. Speak with a doctor about your medications. Regularly speaking with a doctor about your medications, dosing, effectiveness, and side effects, ensure any healthy condition is treated adequately and monitored for any possible anxiety-related side effects. Now, that was about uh, anxiety and uh, related depression, maybe, and of course, panic. 
so mainly we have dealt uh, with panic and anxiety uh, but before i close i always say laughter is the best medicine keep on laughing and today's laughter dose comes in this insertion hope you have gone through it understood it read between the lines lines thanks for watching once again i sign off requesting to subscribe to my channel and actually like it and share it with those who may seek medical informations hope this educational info is useful to you if you find the pieces of information useful then as i said do subscribe to the channel like and share you can also suggest any topic you would like me to throw light on do write your opinion in the comment section thank you see you soon